This is Twit. So um, a little bit under the cloud uh, or un, 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 under the hood, rather, of about Chrome's ad filtering. Uh, as our listeners may already know, the, what we talked about some months back that, that Google had announced Chrome was going to do was the so-called intrusive ad blocking. And I know you talked about this also on, on over the weekend, Leo. Um, it went live in Chrome on Thursday. And so, I, I, you know, from a technology standpoint, I thought it'd be interesting to get some sense for like what's the, what this is all about. So Google explained the day before in a blog posting in their Chromium blog, like what was the basis for this and what were they trying to do? Um, it started with a survey of 40,000 internet users throughout North America, which was taken by a group known as the Coalition for Better Ads, wanting basically to you know, show them a bunch of things and rate how annoying different types of advertising was. There, the two most annoying were the so-called the, the pre stitchal page, which covers where you are um, with a countdown and b- before you're able to get through to it to the site. You know, I mean, Forbes does this, but I don't really mind because you're able to click past it. So it's like, OK. Um, and then the, the, the second most annoying were the flashing animated ads. So. Google notes in their in their coverage of this, in their description of what they're doing in Chrome, that while some problematic ads are sourced by the advertising supplier, meaning, as we've talked about this often, a site creates a rectangular, you know, like sets aside a rectangular area, and then the advertiser puts whatever they're going to put in there, meaning that the site doesn't control necessarily the content, they wrote... Um, the majority of problematic experiences, user experiences, are under the control of and at the specification of the site's owner, such as high advertising density and things like the prestitial page covers that, you know, is script running on the site that, that does this. So Google write, writes, quote, this result led to the approach Chrome takes to protect users from many of the intrusive ad experiences identified by the better ads standards, which is evaluate how well sites comply with the better ad standards, inform sites of any issues encountered, provide the opportunity for sites to address the identified issues, and remove ads from sites that continue to maintain a problematic ads experience. I won't go through all the details that I have in the show notes. If anyone's interested, they can look there. But, but essentially, um, Google is is giving sites or has been giving sites notice through the API if the if behavior that Google is seeing through Chrome is in violation, and if Google starting last Thursday would be taking action against those sites based on this updated set of policies. And they conclude the posting saying early results are showing positive progress for users. Of course, Google is couching all this as, look, you know, we're not wanting everyone to run ad blocking. We're hoping we can take the pressure off of users, you know, taking their own actions by coming up with some compromise. So they're saying uh, in, in, their, in their summary, they said, while the result of this action is that Chrome users will not see ads on sites that consistently violate the better ad standards, our goal is not to filter any ads at all, but to improve the experience for all web users. As of February 12th, so that's what, uh, about two weeks ago, 42% of sites which were failing the better ad standards have resolved their issues and are now passing. This is the outcome, they write, we were hoping for, that sites would take steps to fix intrusive ads experiences themselves and benefit all web users. They say, however, 
if a site continues to maintain non-compliant ad experiences 30 days after being notified of violations, Chrome will begin to block ads on that site. We are encouraged, they conclude, by early results showing industry shifts away from intrusive ad experiences and look forward uh, and look for, uh, forward to continued collaboration with the industry toward a future where Chrome's ad filtering technology will not be needed. So um, this is, you know, strikes me as as a good thing, but also it's a little scary. I mean, it's a web browser um, choosing to enforce a set of policies, which it assumes are what its users want, um, and uh, changing the content of the sites. Now, it is the case that when you go to a site where Chrome has made some changes, you will see a notification, typically a bar along the bottom, where you are able to opt out of of Chrome's filtering of what it considers to be intrusive ads on that site. So the user has control, user has notification if Chrome has done this. Um, and it'll be interesting to see how this goes. I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, Google has been using, as we've often talked about on the podcast, their power, uh, the power of being the majority browser on the web now to make lots of changes in security now we're seeing some clear changes in in advertising content. So, um, you know, with appropriate controls and maybe with a, a good outcome, we can hope. Certainly, the the annoying ads are annoying well, to I all of us. Forbes doesn't put up that interstitial anymore. I don't know if that's uh, <laughs> just a coincidence, but I just went there. Interesting. Yeah. 